Hi guys, hope everyone's well. Uh, last of the four alternative hand-shaped boards I've done myself. Uh, thanks for sticking with me if you've been patient enough to watch all of these and hope you uh, hope you got a little bit of something out of all of them. Uh, so this is the last one. Uh, didn't really know what to call this as a model. I'm just calling it a resin, resin tinted fun machine because it's basically, it's a sort of fun fun all round uh, board with a little bit of performance built in as well really it's just the kind of board that would be uh fun easy to ride and and do a bit of everything for your average person uh this is the kind of board that you know someone like me just be able to ride and ride in a in a variety of conditions and have a bit of fun and you know it's got a little bit of extra rail length to make it forgiving and easy to ride in most conditions. It's still wide enough to be nice and stable uh, and it's still got enough performance elements in it to sort of go quite well. Uh, so this one's basically the nose is sort of kind of a kind of a modernized fish nose and then the tail's kind of a widened out hybrid squash tail tail. So it's kind of like grafting a fish nose onto a step down short board tail and then uh, keeping keeping with a fairly fishy rocker and then keeping a, keeping a nice foil in there so there's plenty of uh, plenty of thickness under your chest uh, the tail's nice and balanced uh, it's got a bit of thickness in there and a bit of width but it's not over thick and uh, the the rails and deck have got a nice bit of volume in it it's like it's not as a uh, it's not quite as pinched down as some of the other boards so it's just a uh, you know just squeeze a little bit more volume in there make it a little bit more easy paddling uh just a stock five fin setup so these are in the these are in kind of the normal position that you get for a five fin so this is going to work as a bit of everything really and then obviously one of the big things on this is this uh is this resin tint that i've done uh kind of it was it was quite a long way around doing this and you'll probably never see you probably won't see many that look exactly like this because it's a it's a long-winded and labor intensive way of doing it uh so normally what would happen is if someone was trying to do something like this they would probably end up with maybe what they call a tail dip so you'd have like you'd have either a straight line or a cross line where the white and the blue resins would cross over each other and you'd get a bit of a uh, a messy patch here which is kind of like a, it makes it a handmade board and people would make that a feature basically where the resin crossed over you'd have a bit of a swirl and then you get that same crossover on the back side uh so it's kind of a it's kind of a, i think it's a pretty happy accident this one so what what i did was i decided to split that tinting work down into elements so basically it's a really long-winded way of going around it but i made a i made an inlaid patch so basically i taped i taped this off and then put the cloth put the cloth here and then cut the cut the cloth whilst it was still semi-wet which is what they call a cut lap which is what you usually see just in this section so i did that just on the tail patch all the way around this perimeter on one side and then i did another patch where i taped off this bit and just did the deck and it was all this first blue that you see here it wasn't this one and then i did another patch which was just the the top of the deck which i taped off and then cut around this line to separate the white and then i did another patch which was the whole front with a wrap onto the rail in a cut lap so that that that's that cut lap line and then because those are they're okay but they're all essentially not completely filled gaps from each other so you really need to put a whole layer of cloth around that again to make sure it's strong i then did a another four it's all four ounces as well so it's all the lighter cloth and there's more of it so you'll get like a durable glass job but there's a lot of glassing work gone on in it so yeah then after i finished all this color work i did a completely clear four ounce wrap down and over these rails and then i did another completely clear four ounce wrap on this whole top side and wrap it over again so it's like there's a lot of glassing work done into it gone into it but uh 
st I'm still a bit wary on the time I've got and, and having that extra time to do all the colour whilst I was doubling up and whilst I was trying to concentrate on getting a neat line between the blue and the white on both sides. You know, it's it's all adding to the time you've got and you've basically got you basically got 20 minutes once you once you mix the two parts of the epoxy resin, you've got about 20 minutes. So uh, yeah, maybe 30 if you're lucky. But if you start messing with two different colours and a lot of deck work and colours crossing over each other and mixing two different batches and getting the colour right and maybe having to filter some of the colours and all the rest of that it's just time that I just didn't feel like I had so I separated into elements so yeah yeah it's kind of a bit of a happy accident because you'll probably never see you won't see many boards with these uh like a real tight trim line it's usually what you do for like an inlay or maybe like a deck inlay or just a tail inlay on the board you wouldn't really do it all the way around so it's uh yeah so I think it's come out really good I'm really happy with it the color consistency is quite good uh shape's really good it's just really smooth this it's just a yeah it's just a super nice uh all-round fun board for an average wave for a fairly average person uh that's still going to perform a bit uh not gone too crazy with the uh with the concaves it's just my usual basically i've gone a single concave through here uh starts breaking into a double just between and through the fins and then we've got a little v off the tail so i won't even come around and show you those because you've seen you've seen if you've seen my other videos you've seen a detailed version of how i do like my normal concave and then how uh how i do a deep v and double and those are pretty much the two i mainly use so uh yeah i've got a nice hard rail here so it's basically a an extended it's not even really a squash tail it's kind of like a it's kind of like a rounded, it's a rounded square, rounded square, rounded squash. Uh, and for, yeah, alternatives, if someone wanted this kind of board, you will find this around. It's not, it's not as chunky, but it's not dissimilar to the super brand fling. That's a really cool board. That's the same sort of thing. They've stuck a fish nose on the front end and then gone for this sort of like varied large squash tail on the back. Uh, and yeah really pleased with this one it's come out really well it's finished well i put the extra work into sanding it trying to get a you know try to get a shiny finish off the end of it uh you know so you got quite a nice nice semi flat rocker the foil's really nice going through this deck we're we've got quite a bit of thick thickness still up in the rails and deck so it's nice and forgiving and then the tail sort of keeps its surface area but fins down quite nicely and uh like a nice hard sharp really nice hard sharp looking sort of rounded squash tail uh so yeah i'll keep i won't go majorly majorly into this one i'll keep this a bit short i won't come around and show you the concaves and uh fins i could show you a bunch of fins but basically similar to some of the other boards i've shown you at the very biggest end of the fins you'd put on this you would put something similar to what i put in my quad fish and then at the sensible end you'd probably end up just with a large set of quad fins or a large set of thruster fins like if it was i'd pick something like the for my size and my shape i'd pick something like a futures f8 quads quad set maybe a tyler warren set maybe that's a five fin set uh maybe the uh maybe the controllers if you wanted to go on the bigger end uh and yeah they say the the fin positions on these are basically optimized to be a quad fin or a tri fin so again you could put other things in it but it's not made it's not really made to be optimal to be a keel fin or a two or a twin and trailer it's basically meant to be a fairly standard but large size quad or thruster uh so yeah i'm really happy with the color work on this and uh it's just nice and smooth and I'm, I'm i'm thinking it should be a in the type of board and the wave range it's probably the sort of board that's gonna that's gonna suit anyone anyone like intermediate surfer uh maybe even maybe even a sort of early intermediate or late beginner surfer or first short board kind of thing depending on your weight um all the way up to i mean probably out of advanced surfers are going to want something a lot more uh rippable than this but this is the sort of thing that maybe someone who surfs well would just take out and throw in the car for family days out when they just don't know what waves they're going to have and they just want a bit of fun and make life easy and they might have something like this uh as i say super brand flings are kind of similar board there'll be a couple of js's and stuff where you, 
and, and other boards where you'll see like they've kind of ended up with a fishy nose and then a sort of hybrid tail and uh yeah no it's a great combo because it just makes life it's just a go-to board easy to ride you're going to be able to ride sort of waist to chest to a decent bit overhead and uh it's going to have plenty of glide and because it's a bit longer rail length than you like sort of five tens and stuff it's going to be a little bit more forgiving you've still got the whip for stability you've got the volume for paddle power so you know just going up from like five ten to six one you're probably going to be able to squeeze an extra two maybe like two or three liters in off a slight compared to a slightly more refined 510 uh yeah so i'll keep this one fairly short for this like i say there's not a there's not a massive amount to say i mean obviously i'm delighted with the uh shape and the color work and i'm really pleased with like the rocker and the finish and just how this board's come out overall there's a real uh you know for my level of surfing this is i think this is probably like my 15th board i've, I've not even been i've not even been shaping boards a year yet so i've got a bit obsessed and a bit over excited with the amount that i've made uh so yeah and thanks for watching this series guys hope you've all learned a bit of something or enjoyed it or enjoyed following my shaping journey with me and i hope it's given you some information that's helped you out with your board choices and uh, your fin choices and all the rest of it and thanks for following me thanks for your encouragement and uh if you've got any questions or if I can help you with anything, just uh, flick me a direct message on either YouTube or Instagram. I always try and help people out where I can. You know, say the channel was mainly about helping people make decisions on their boards and fin choices. So I always try and help everyone out where I can. And this might well be the last video before Christmas now as well. So, uh, so yeah, cheers for your support all year. And, uh, you know, I hope, I hope uh, even if you're stuck and locked in hopefully something's given you a bit of a bit of enjoyment or filled in a bit of time when you've been bored at the worst case and uh yeah thanks for watching and yeah enjoy yourself have a good christmas stay safe and we'll see you next year on go surf see ya